you might have interacted with our next speaker. So it might be on the community forum, on Discord, or on Twitter. So J Jason today has uh, probably used an attend for almost everything I can share. And uh, today he is going to talk about how you can create automation and still keep your checkup team sane. So take it over, Jason. All right. And I'll even share my camera because wouldn't be a any day in session if I didn't have my Hawaiian shirt on. So I'm just going to share my screen if I can find the right one. Uh, there we are. All right. I'm assuming everybody can see my screen. Yep. Uh, so um, today going to be a little bit of a different presentation than what I typically do. Usually I come on here and show you some crazy thing I've done in NADN. Uh, but we're going to focus a little bit more because we're talking about security today. Uh, focus a little bit more on how you set up and uh, configure your NADN workflows in order to make sure that you don't break security policies, uh, make sure that you can keep your uh, SecOps team sane by making their lives easier. And uh, we're going to do that by using um, using the uh, using service accounts within NADN. So. I guess right off the bat, you know, what is a service account? Um, we, we don't necessarily hear about service accounts uh, all the time. Uh, quite often, that's a new concept to people. So I figured we'd well, spend a couple of minutes just kind of talking a little bit more about what the service account is. So service accounts are actually a, uh, they're a special account for non-interactive processes, which guess what? That's what NNN is. Um, what you do is you uh, set up these accounts so that um, when you are doing different work and so on, this is the account that's being used. Um, it's actually a commonly seen on most server-based operating systems. Um, so Windows, Linux, Mac, um, all these different systems have these service accounts built into them. And uh, so if you've ever run an Apache server, you might have run across the www-data service account. So that's the account that's being used for um, running all the Apache servers and, and everything in behind the scenes. So right now, let's talk about how most no-code, low-code systems work with credentials. Uh, so typically what you'll do is you'll go in and um, you'll use your unique credentials to access the platform. So you'll log in with your account. But then once you get into the platform, um, they ask you to do something which has always kind of thrown up a red flag for me. They ask you to give your personal credentials to access all the other systems. So if you want to access your mail account, you want to access your, um, your, your Google Drive, what have you, it's always asked you for your personal account. And that's always kind of made me nervous. I, I, I tend to be a nervous person when it comes to stuff like that. Um, and uh, often that's in the form of like a third party um, uh, authorization. So you're handing over your, the, the keys to your Google account or your Facebook account, for example. And uh, so when I look at that, I'm going, hmm, you know, do I really trust this platform? And so I, I thought to myself, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. And um, because really when you take a look at, at how we do it now, you know, there's really no differentiation between the uh, user and the automation. And because there's no differentiation, all kinds of problems come up. So first of all, you've got no independent control of your automation. Your, your automation is always doing things as the user. And so there's really no, no way to control it independently. Um, second, you kind of relinquish your control to the automation itself. So that, you know, if the automation wants to do something uh, as me, I really can't stop it unless I have to go in and, and start working with the automation itself. It's also pretty much impossible to audit the automation. You know, if um, the automation looks like me and behaves like me and acts like me, it is me. And so if I have the SecOps team going in and trying to figure out what happened, you know, to my account or what happened to uh, uh, something, you know, my email's missing, they have no way of knowing if I deleted an email or the automation. And then finally, again, I kind of alluded to this earlier, um, though you can't uh, disable the automation from your side. You have to go into the automation itself and, and stop it. Because if you do, uh, you're going to be stuck with 
disabling your own account. So for example, if you're using your email credentials in the automation and it's you know sending off random emails to people, the only way that you can stop it without having access to the automation itself is to disable your own email account. And that's just a disaster waiting to happen. So this is where the service accounts come in. Um, my recommendation is that whenever you can, create a separate service account for your automation. So I will often create an n 8 n account uh, where, when I'm doing stuff. I will create an automations account um, for the um, the startup that I'm I'm uh, I'm working with. Um, you know, we have an account called Oasis, and that's our automation account. And so we know that whenever we see this account, we see this information popping up we know that this is an automation doing this. Um, so it gives us a, a, a bunch of things. And the big part of it is around that it isolates the automation from the user. Um, so you can independently control the automation uh, you know, from the user. You can disable the account, enable the account, and it's not going to have any effect on your personal account. Uh, secondly, you, uh, the user maintains control of his own account. So it's not like stuff's going to be happening under your name. It's all completely isolated. Um, the automations are very easily auditable because you'll have a different account name showing up as performing the different actions within the system. And uh, finally, I, if, the, if an automation goes rogue or, or something happens that shouldn't be happening, um, it will very quickly be able to go and disable that account and stop it from doing things, even if you don't have access to the n 8 um, uh, dashboard or, or any of the other any end processes. So how do you set up service accounts for any that? Um, it, it really varies depending upon what platform you're going to be uh, going in and working with. So let's take a use case here, uh, just to kind of give you guys an example. So uh, you're consulting to a business and that business wants to, um, you to have the ability to read their calendar information uh, from any end to see people's availability. They're using the G Suite of, of um, systems. So normally what you would do is you'd get that person's credentials and go in and access their, their uh, uh, in information from their calendar. Two challenges come up for that. So one, what if you have a company of 100 people? Getting 100 people to come in to NADN, put in all their credentials, set up all that information, especially with Google, because Google can be a challenge with all the different pieces that they need to do with the Google console. Um, it's, you're easily looking at a couple of hours per person. And that's a pretty long project. Now, mind you, if you're billing, that might not be a bad thing, but um, you may get some questions on your invoice. If you create an N8 an account within G Suite for accessing the calendars, then all you need to do is set up that N8 an account and then all the users can share their calendars with that n 8 automation account. And then they've got the ability to look at different people's accounts, look at their, their uh, calendars, whether they're busy, what's available, so on and so forth. Um, for other systems, so going away from G Suite, what you might be able to do is create a separate account for them all together. And in, if you don't need to share information, but just access it, then you control the permissions. So HubSpot, for example, uh, you would go in, create the account in HubSpot, and then HubSpot uh, would give any end the ability to access what it needs based on the roles that it has. Uh, so to summarize, you keep independent control uh, um, of the automation from, over, from the user. You, the user maintains control of his own account. The automation's actions are easily auditable, and the automation can be stopped from the, uh, the user or the automation side. It's really the big advantages that you get from the service account. And with that, we're open to some questions, or maybe I'll just pass it over to Harshal, and uh, we'll kind of keep on with the rest of the uh, of the event here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason, for sharing this. Uh, like, this small tips uh, can make a lot of difference, and we don't realize that. So, thank you, uh, you know, for sharing these tips and helping us realize how important such small things can be.